unascended sons of God. I am come to you tonight of the brethren of the sacred fire to speak of the harmony of eternal spheres, to speak of the desire of freedom to manifest on a world scale in the world order and to create harmony which will blend together hearts in peace and love. Throughout the playing of the music by these devoted musicians, the angels of my band, those whom you call angels of St. Germain, poured forth the love of higher octaves into this atmosphere to create a sense of heaven's wavelength, a sense of the peace and joy that manifests at higher octaves of light. As I come to you tonight, I have a vital message. It is the message of a son of God. It is the message of every son of God. The son of man came not into the world to condemn the world, but that through him might manifest everlasting life. Long ago in merry old England, as Francis Bacon, I was born to the late Queen Elizabeth and the Earl of Leicester as a love child born out of wedlock. And I espoused then by all of the dignity of heaven to assist every child upon this planet born out of wedlock to realize that he has an eternal father and an eternal mother to realize that there is in his life no stain or taint, nothing of ignobility, but much of cosmic nobility. I make no plea for immorality. I make a plea for understanding. I make a plea for compassion, for forgiveness. For throughout the world order, men are scarcely prone to forgive their fellows for the same acts that they are often guilty of. And the weight of their condemnation becomes a heavy axe over the head of men that almost severs the head from the body. I then whom you call holy brother, come tonight in the name of infinite freedom to still the dissonance in the world order that seeks to point the finger of shame upon any part of life. Every part of life is entitled to what the lawyers have called his day in court. Every individual is entitled in the courts of heaven to make a bid for his freedom, to sometime, somewhere, someplace, seize the hands of his divine presence and by a fervor akin to the sacred fire from the altars of heaven, rise by the passions of divine magnetism out of the sense rhapsody that has enthralled him in to the magnificence of his God flame. Zarathustra did it. Elijah did it. Jesus did it and countless others. And everyone is welcome through the doorway of the ascension 
when they have understood the need for discipline and manifestation of righteousness. We deal not here with self-righteousness. We deal not here with the machinations of the human mind as it seeks to conceive by its own so-called right some way that it may penetrate through the doorway by its own design. But there is a way which God hath made, and it is the way that God has decided and decrees mankind shall return to his heart. It is a plain way, a simple way, the way of the Christ, and the way of the followers of the Christ, the brethren who extend hands of love in the night to those who have lost their way. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the light is filled with far more meaning and a greater level of poignancy than the average man is ready to credit those simple statements with possessing. I am the way means that God is the way. I am the truth means that God is the truth. I am the life means that God is the life. And no man is bereft of a tie to his divine presence. You have that tie this moment. It is a vital, fire-inspiring breath from the very sacred heart of God. It trembles through the ethers. It cuts the sheaths of dense desire that surround individuals. And it causes him to understand that freedom's flame in God's name is his own to claim. Divine love, the essence of the sacred fire, descending upon the altar of the heart and transforming dense emotions into the ethereal concepts that so airy in their beauty are like cloud-capped chambers of infinite communion where men may spin the dreams of God in complete contentment as they understand that when he chastens neath his rod it is for divine perfectionment of men. God sunders. He cuts men free. God does not blunder. He makes men to see reality not as the thoughts that they have thought that were error they have brought to the feet of the universe, but a light within the heart, a light within the mind, a lamp on two men's feet, an admonishment to be kind, to understand the mind of God that tried and tried and tried mankind again and again that he may bring mankind to the perfectionment which he hath designed for all. Rest, beloved brethren of light, in the arms of holy brethren all in white. Cease your strange concerns that cause you to have fear. Rejoice in the flame of freedom when I am near. For I am nigh even at the very door of the hearts of those who are the sons of liberty who adore the perfection of the cosmic cube of white light that descends before man's sight and reveals to him the construction of the universe 
as geometry tried and proven, and the necessity for rebirth, that as the white stone is given to every man, it may provide for him an understanding of that plan which makes all one by a divine decree and eliminates fear and negativity. For light is bold, it penetrates the dark. Light will strip from every tree the bark and show the sap that flows within as life that comes from God begin to understand that flow and recognize that you can be this moment all aglow with fires of infinity, infinity, infinity as seamless garment of the cosmic Christ revealed, no more concealed beneath an outer sham or show, but now revealed as infinite love fires glow, the starry radiance from thy heart will through the misty darkness part the veils of matter, revealing mind most kind, not blind, that sees thee in himself a portion of the human kindness of the Most High God, not human creation that has bowed man down beneath his heavy burdened lot. My burden is light, was the cry of the cosmic Christ. My burden is right, the righteousness of God, not some paltry garment with which mankind are clod, a paltry garment of their own weaving, a self-righteous garment themselves deceiving, Oh, how paltry this is, and what beggars men are who lean upon the staff that they have made and forget the starry radiance God has made, which makes men all unafraid to face life boldly with a grin, self-determined now then to win their victory over every human sin and din of mortal sound, that's carried burdens all the world around, communications of the darkened ones who blunder neath their own distorted suns and see not the light of God that penetrates the world and frees mankind as great cosmic sails unfurled will carry forth the ship of state of man's being to a higher fate where life in beauty does abound, and hears the mighty trump of heavenly sound coming o'er the water from afar, speaking to all mankind, O oh, see my star, it is thy hope that does invoke a newly made portion of the spoke of cosmic reality that leads to center hub, where man will understand that all that's worn him to a nub is but distortions form and fashions of the flesh. Now see the living spirit. God direct all men to be that living spirit clothed with coats of skins that shall be made radiant by the light that is within. The transcendent power of the mighty God that shakes mankind from all that's of the sod and frees him to obtain his cosmic rod of infinite power over all mortal conditions to wield, to understand the need to be in cosmic light then sealed. Forever purpose is revealed, the cosmic plan that God does make, the cosmic plan that does the mortal will then break, that in each cosmic egg of cosmic light the flame may flash in mighty brilliance bright to make the soul to see that God makes all things right and all that God has made stands and faces all the universe without fear, unafraid to see I am the light that breaks the tide to death and cycles of the flesh and does by cosmic will the passions of that individual direct until they will ascend as God intends to reunion of the cosmic 
friend of friends, their own divine presence now embracing, their own divine presence now erasing all that men have thought was writ for air to doom them to a fate that God by prayer does redirect and say to every son on earth, there is upon thee now no universal curse, but only God's great love that will be raised because thy heart will by cosmic effort manifest itself as full of praise the God-directed light that flows through men and raises them once more to cosmic heart again. Beloved ones, the great scroll of the cosmic law is designed to instruct every chila, every disciple in the ritual of cosmic freedom. There is no need then for men to grovel upon this planetary body or submit to their own body of corporeal substance with all of their past records of sin's momentum. The power to break that chain that binds mankind is in the flame that is within. And by the flames and by decree, mankind are made to greater light than see that they may understand aright the power of God's beacon in the night that flashes forth and flashes forth again until the world returns to happy heart again. God's heart is a happy heart. It is the universal beat of infinite rhythm. It is complete within itself, and it actually needs not at inner levels any instrumentation from manifest creation. Yet it is not content to submit to mankind's destructivity, and therefore the great white brotherhood, as a watchman upon the wall, as a guardian of pure truth, creates in the world arena a service of great cosmic light so that the truth may be disseminated into the world of form and will be the power to make men free. It is the truth that makes you free, beloved ones, and it is nothing else but the truth. And as you understand the truth in greater measure, you will then regard that truth as greater treasure and your hearts will be filled with new frames of reference to understand that all that you have seen on earth is man's own plan that comes to naught and by its zero has man brought to his knees and feet and to defeat which brings him down to lose his crown and tumble down as Jack and Jill or all the town where man does still partake of same old substance of corruption and does seal his fate in all that causes him continued pain. Yet God, by cosmic flame, does seek to free men all. And when they are free, they will understand that not blind fame, but divine flame raises men. I have brought to you tonight in some prose and some poetry an understanding of your freedom as a pageant revealed to you to strengthen your bond with yourself, your higher self, and this is an infinite revelation of freedom to every man that will accept it. And as you accept it, it will come within you, and it will quicken you, and it will develop you, and it will fashion you, and life will be blessed 
because you live. Even as life is blessed because God lives. God lives to bestow. And the greatest gift that he desires to bestow on mankind here below is the gift of himself. You have desired his pleasures. You have desired his treasures. You have desired his power. I say unto you that they were with every man one hour and they were taken from mankind as mankind demonstrated without fail that they were unable to endure the responsibility. I'm sorry, someone broke it. This must remain as an unfinished dictation.
O little bells, ring out. I speak of blue bells, of buttercups, of the floral kingdom, of gentle breezes, of the realm of the elemental and of child communion with the sense of beauty. And I speak of the need to reawaken in children the understanding of the good and the beautiful at an early age. You have said, and it has been said, as the twig is bent, so the child is inclined to grow. And the expansion of consciousness is a field of endeavor in which not only man alone shares, but the heavenly hosts, the angelic hosts, the ascended masters, and the whole stream of bright, self-luminous, conscious existence. Men called me of old the divine Pavalero, but I am not impoverished, but I am rich in the knowledge of the operation that heaven is the strategies of God that manifest in life below not to ensnare men but to quicken them to awaken them to the potential of life that beats their hearts there is a need for stillness in consciousness and self-control that can momentarily dam the flow so that the individual can decree and determine the rate of progress of the stream of God consciousness flowing through his world so that the pageant of divine beauty may be expanded into mortal consciousness and the domain of mankind. I compare then the rushing of a great plain across the land and the way in which images are distorted coming so rapidly that mankind cannot assimilate them to the slow movement of a cart drawn by an animal in which mankind in the past were seated and contemplated the glory of the countryside. There is such an unrush of potential evoked by the ascended masters and my brethren at this time as to cause mankind to sense almost a dizzying pace which I allow most humbly is necessary. But I wish, as all ascended masters do, to lend variety to the conscious expression of individuality that men may pick and choose a variety of manifestations of consciousness so that they may derive the greatest benefit from the whole stream as it flows. But consciousness is not the domain alone of adulthood. It is also the forte of the little child that shall lead mankind beside the still water and restore the fragrance of the soul to manifestation. I come then with that love for holy wisdom that imparts 
unto each expression of God the fiber and strength of perception of beauty. This requires a re-education on the part of some who have been exposed to the brutality of the world, who have entertained in consciousness thought forms and engrams whose substance is sticky and resembles molasses or tar, conveying also those unwholesome attitudes of thought and feeling that are horrific. God has not intended that man's consciousness should be so, but that the sweet and gentle joys of the nodding floral kingdom should manifest to his heart, that the unbroken chain that crieth, forget me not to the Creator, should manifest its gentle blue flame blossom in the heart of men as memory of love in Christ's name made manifest to the little children of God who are not too sophisticated to understand that together with holy wisdom there is a beauty in simplicity, tranquility, and mercy that distills in the consciousness of man the essence of singular beauty conveyed from God's heart directly to the heart of man. And wisdom loveth her children. The children of God are a special group, and I reference here those who know it. For those who know it not are often led roughshod into the marts of the world as warriors and conveyors of destruction to peace and harmony. Violence gave them birth, and violence do they breed. Destruction is in their heart and the way of peace they have not known. The Christ hood, universal, desires to convey the messianic concept that naturally from bud to flower unfolds latent divinity every hour. I come then with no great stirring unrush of my energy, but I come to burnish the bright and shining hopes that are in your minds and hearts, that the polish of our ascended master industry may rebuke the trends of dialectic materialism and the mechanism of this age and reveal that the God that existed of yore is the God that exists today and will exist tomorrow, the form of the manifestation of that eternal one upon earth will depend upon the matrices of thought and feeling that you as his body upon earth and men of allied purpose can develop and permit to envelop them as a swaddling garment of hope and purity and the washing of the water by the word that ushers forth from the orifice of the Almighty, the word that God has spoken that cannot be broken, the pledges and promises that delight the heart, that free the soul, 
that reinforce the beauty senses of all. And as I speak to you, I am mindful of how that many of the little children of this age are being corrupted at an early age. Even before the age of seven, hardness has entered into their hearts and a sense of the brutal, a sense of struggle and communion with nature is no more. It is an amusing sidelight, perhaps, one which I may casually mention, that many of the children living in the city of New York have never seen the animal you call a cow, but have often partook of its fruit in the form of milk. The world today and its children are experiencing awful travails of misfortune, and yet the world mother trembles with hope that some among mankind will see their plight and desire to provide an impetus to renewed nourishment for all of these little ones whom God loves. They were destined one day to be fragrant flowers in the garden of heaven, but their present course is brutality and violence, a way of knife and gun, of tooth and claw, of fang and hopelessness, of poverty and idleness of struggle and sense of struggle, of atheism and materialism, and of strange attempts to escape from their hopeless and pitiful state. Those who are able to enjoy the higher level of consciousness are seldom able to recreate nor would it be specifically desirous that they do, the states of consciousness of many of these little ones in whom the world mother is so concerned. But we of the great white brotherhood who understand the meaning of the word wisdom and her children desire to impart that higher education of the spirit to the new age which will enable them to feel the pulsations of divine love from the elemental kingdom, to commune with the spirits that create the wind, the elementals of Aries' band, to commune with the earth and her verdant reality through flowers and blades of grass and rustling winds from a vast variety of trees, to sense the Holy Spirit in its myriad dispensations as vital to the manifestation of externalities as well as internalities and feelings of hope, of joy, of contemplation, of reality. There is too much togetherness on the part of mankind today of the wrong sort, a gathering unto Babylonian confusion and too little separation and spaces between souls to enable them to quietly draw from the heart of their presence the essential levels of cosmic understanding and communion with nature in her verdant beauty. We then today say to you who are radii, foci, centers of God power, you can in idle moments create as God creates. You can draw as God draws the magnificent energy of his heart. You can stimulate in the hearts of others 
by a projection of the auric consciousness out into the world, divine love, you will be a channel for God as you radiate it forth. Divine understanding, communion with the angels, communion with nature, with the flowers, and with love for love's own sweet sake. You can embrace God as a divine pavalero. As one of the masters said to you, one of my brethren in closing, I give you my love for all else I have given away. Thus, the students of the ascended masters of the cosmic flame from the heart of God can understand their role in providing assistance to the children of men. For God acts in strange and mysterious ways through his body upon earth. And his body upon earth is composed of those who have committed themselves unto his care. To mother wind, to mother sun, to the spirit of nature as God revealed it, as man has undone. We desire then to see a greater love transpire in heart and mind. We desire a greater span of love to bind the world and all its family loved of old into a sheepfold marvelous to behold where lion with young lamb lies down and love surrounds the entire town of world community as Moria sees, flooding the world with mother love, that Mary frees from heart of world mother seeking to embrace her children, all men, sisters, brother, children of the sun, flame, splendor, wisdom bold that seeks now to reclaim her sons and daughters born of old of sacred fire element, compassion, light and love does flow and blesses all the earth below, weaving patine of loveliness, wisdom's bond. It is true intelligence that through nature now resounds. God, as sound of seashell, distant shore, eternal pleasures man endures not now but one day shall I am the flame that distant seems that in thy heart as tenderness now gleams O holy grail fashioned from the sun the cup of radiance thou holdest now and evermore is one. Serving the brotherhood of light, I 
Ladies and gentlemen of the never-failing light of God, how well I know the tremors in your hearts as you contemplate the present pageant of the world, the drama that has manifested and brought fear to multitudes of people concerned with the happenings of the times and what may well come into manifestation upon the planet. Little consideration, blessed ones, is given by men to the tremendous activity of light from higher octaves that constantly seeks to produce in manifest form the will of God among men. Honor and integrity, service and love for the sake of love's own sweet sake is seldom today utilized in the political marts of the world. The criteria of men is usually as to what will produce for themselves the most effective gain, and only the few are attendant upon the very real needs of mankind. Never mind what has occasioned this strange state of world affairs. The condition must be mended, and this is more to the point apropos of the hour then. I say unto you all that the summoning of intense determination on the part of the student body of world servers is the means of intensifying here below because the call compels the answer. The great effulgent service of the light to mankind as the ascended host respond again and again to the invocations of the hour. Serving our cause is necessary then if mankind are to know their freedom in this age. Unless this be done, I fear also that the world conditions will become graver even by the hour and by the day. But if the faith of the faithful will rise up and pulsate, demanding of the heavenly hosts a release 
of the necessary efficacious manifestations upon the planet calculated to awaken mankind from the lethargic sleep of the ages in which he is presently steeped, I suspect that there will come to pass the renaissance of the good and the beautiful upon this planetary body, and it is to this purpose and this purpose alone that I am dedicated this day on behalf of the entire spirit of the great white brotherhood in ordered service, not in complacent attitude. The body of God below must keep pace with the heavenly hosts above who have determined that much must be done and quickly before all is lost for this particular contemporary evolution of mankind. We do not, of course, even in cases where planets are destroyed by reason of their false activity, consider for one moment that all would ultimately be lost even if civilization should succeed in destroying themselves. But I assure you it is not a happening which we wish to occur. Certainly, if an insurance policy could be taken out that would guarantee mankind that this would not occur, all would rest more comfortably in heaven as below. I say to you then, precious ones of the light, you do not know how much depends upon your valor in ordered service and on behalf of the present day world order. There are so few, by comparison to the many, who understand the pressing needs of this hour and that conditions are as grave as they are. There is a tendency for mankind to be rocked to sleep in the cradle of the deep effluvic traditions in which he is steeped, and therefore the world order continues in its own efforts to outpicture happiness whilst it continues to outpicture banality. Be it so, it is not God's intent. Be it so, it is not the ascended master's intent. Be it so, it ought to be no man's intent. For the very purposes of life themselves were calculated to give rise to the pulsations of love as a feeling of wholeness toward the beloved, the object of man's affections. When man loves, it is intended that his love should focalize the energies of his being in some form of service to the beloved, that the beloved may be in an aura of greater comfortability. Therefore, the ascended masters continue to pour forth their radiation into the world of form per se and to gather together upon earth the body of the kingdom of world servers who understand the needs of this hour even as the Christ understood in Gethsemane the acts which were necessary the following day as he himself offered himself a complete sacrifice in culmination of his great mission of ordered service to mankind. Each life stream is a mission. Each individual has a mission. And the intensification and focalization of the energies of being in the chalice of manifestation for the purposes of directing that that mission should be accomplished as God intends is the responsibility of the individual monad. Now, if men do not suspect that they have a mission and they are convinced that their life is wholly their own, they may have a tendency to dissipate all of the precious oils of anointment which God has placed within the very fabric of the soul and upon their blessed head. Do you know, precious ones, that if the singular mission of each individual upon this planetary body is recognized and that individual turns toward the eternal presence as the Christ did in Gethsemane, where he sweat those great drops of blood, as it were, it will come to pass that man will see the need to exert themselves on behalf of cosmic purpose, noble effort for and on behalf of cosmos, for you are, although a seemingly separated drop of the infinite ocean of God's divine love, a very real part of that love and a part that is necessary 
to the creation of a climate of acceptability among mankind. For I call to your attention this blessed day that in the setting off of dynamite charges there is always the need for a dynamite cap and a fuse which produces the triggering mechanism whereby the whole explosion occurs. Then men must understand that a sense of mission and the desire to draw forth that mission from on high does create the fuse and cap in consciousness which will invoke from the very heart of God the internal, eternal, infinite master of life, the response that will provide each life stream with the impetus of ordered service and understanding of their mission whereby they can go forth empowered as men, God sent, heaven sent, and understanding full well what their own responsibility is and how they may draw from on high the energies the hour may require. The great summoning then of each individual life stream to divine responses is a necessary requirement of this day. I am come then on behalf of the Darjeeling Council, the Master of Paris, of the Council of Paris, of the Ascended Masters, of the great sons of liberty of your own nation to admonish you this day that the hour of world peril comes to a state and fever pitch of anxiety for those of us who understand the problems of the hour that has never before in history manifested except preceding the fall of an entire era. And I reference here the fall of Lemuria, of Atlantis, of also all civilizations that have ever fallen into disrepute and decay, including Rome, including Greece, and also including Sodom and Gomorrah, as well as Vesuvius, and the island of Sicily, and other places where destructive activity has brought about a terrible and frightening manifestation such as Pompeii. Understand then that this particular hour is an hour when by a summoning of a sense of mission you individually may become the fuse which ignites the mental belt of the entire planetary body whereby all mankind are alerted to the needs to cease their intransigence and recognize the cosmic constant of nature that each day rises the sun within the hemispheres and brings the beneficence of her holy healing light unto nature and to man. When men understand and recognize the constancy of nature and by comparison consider their own butterfly vacillation consciousness that by turns waxes hot and then waxes cold, they will see why it was spoken to the churches in the early days of Laodicea, Thou art neither hot nor cold, but thou art lukewarm, and therefore I will spew thee out of my mouth. When we deal with cosmic diplomacy, we must recognize that a sense of worth must be born in all of the creation, and the destructive elements in society today are the psychic poisons that permeate the atmosphere of the planetary body and render to each man the basic structural idea from the heart of the nefarious shadowed forces of the planet that say unto him, you are an ineffective, splintered individual that has no power whatsoever to alter world conditions. I tell you, precious ones, that conditions in every age in the past have been no different whatsoever than they are today. And in the past, when great historic victories were won, as well as when noble examples of cosmic emissaries were sent forth into the world order, it was possible to summon 
through the individuality of mankind, the necessary unified action of whole parts of the whole, whereby the planetary body became the beneficiary of man's individualized activities unified completely as they sought to externalize the will of God and place it above their own. Today is no different, and the powers of darkness that seek to defy the Most High God's divine intent to bestow all good upon this planetary body have no power today whatsoever except the power of the beasts which mankind give unto themselves to exercise their bestial manifestations of hatred and world violence. Hatred and world violence have never, even in past tradition, succeeded in creating a noble climate for the manifestation of Christhood or God magnificence. It is true that by hard-won victories of the past, civilizations were able to exercise a form of control over masses of the people. And out of the masses of the people, by a divine miracle, the ascended masters were able to evoke the responses to culture, art, music, and the humanities which have given to the world the great progress that it has made in these areas. Now then, as I have come to you this day, it is to remind you that conditions in the world today are the fruit of the ages, and that all that has gone before of world discipline, of world service, hinges upon this present hour as to whether or not they shall be perpetual unto mankind, to your posterity, to your sons and your daughters, and those who shall follow. In fact, all upon earth wait with bated breath to see as to whether or not the awful forces of Armageddon, which are arrayed against the cosmic Christ, shall be successful in supplanting in the mind of man all that he has desired to do of service unto his Creator. We of the great white brotherhood order, who establish in the world of form constant focalizations of our presence, are aware of the fact that mankind in their separated state and in a sense of separation from time to time do feel very ineffectual by reason of their sense of separation. When they are together with those of like mind, there is always a reinforcing of that sense that is a sense of cosmic valor. But remember, by a like token that this law is also effective when men mingle with the mass entities of the world, with the crowds in the marts of the world, where they are subjected to a faithless manifestation that wanders hither and thither in the world as a purposeless pleasure-seeking round of mortal existence. Men then of God, spiritual men, are subjected to these outer conditions constantly, bombarded from within by the untransmuted areas of their own life and from without by the untransmuted substance of other men's lives. Let us then convey to you today the very real need for men occasionally to withdraw apart from the world into a desert or waste place where the outer glamour and glitter of the world, the tinsel that manifests there, is not able to exercise its usual control over the mind and feeling of the individual. In this withdrawal, however, there is always the ever-present danger that the heart will hunger after its briefly separated contact with the outer world and will be drawn and magnetized into that contact mentally or in the feeling world of the individual. Those who are dedicated then to the great principles of the cosmic brotherhood of light understand the need of discipline each day that when the moment of withdrawal occurs wherein separation gives man the freedom to have greater contact with his divine self, he is able to summon from the great treasure house of his life energies in a constructive vein those cosmic powers and graces which will enable him to exercise to the fullest advantage in a spiritual way and produce the perfection for which his heart hungers. The service of the individual to mankind is necessary, for all service must come through the individual. 
It is true that collectively speaking, groups may actually provide an avenue whereby collective service may be gathered and offered unto the ascended masters. But it still relates to the world of the individual in the final analysis. And therefore, each individual must conceive of himself as a doorway into the infinite realm where he may pursue the cosmic Christ and the great tomes of spiritual learning that are given and dispensed at higher octaves of light. As I come to you this day, it is with a very special fervor for world conditions, for I have just examined another white paper that has been released by the Darjeeling Council, a dossier that has been subjected to the pressures of those masters who abide in the Grand Teton areas of the United States, in the Great Cave of Symbols, and also in Darjeeling, India. The masters who have prepared this paper have prepared it only for our perusal, that is, for the perusal of the ascended masters and those few individuals upon the planetary body who are able to have exercised control over themselves to such a degree that they can at will leave their physical bodies and have achieved such an initiation as at least the brother of the third degree. Those who are able then to do this will be entitled to inspect the white paper which I have this day read prior to coming to you. And they will then understand how that it is a very definite activity of the sinister force to make merchandise of the necessary warnings which we have sounded forth to mankind by creating a false sense of security in mankind simply because the actual awful culmination of those warnings does not manifest. It is really trite when one considers it from the angle of the ascended masters that individuals shall be so mincy about this all in their consciousness that they shall actually say simply because chaos has not descended upon us, therefore chaos will not descend upon us. We then today desire to quicken in your consciousness the understanding that in the days of Noah, when the ark was preparing, Noah, the preacher of righteousness, was declaring to that contemporary civilization for 40 years the actual imminent approach of the flood that swept across ancient Atla. And so it came to pass that in that time, men who heard the preaching the first year, and then the tenth year, and the twentieth, as the decades passed, grew weary of accepting the divine potential of possibility that the law had the foreknowledge of the destruction that would manifest and therefore individuals were rocked to sleep literally in the cradle of the deep. I say to you then today that the ascended masters as the great ascended masters that lived in the higher realms such as Enoch at that time knew that the love of God did not wish to see the destruction of man including the civilization which he had made and which he expressed his great love for as a verdant love each day bursting forth through nature into resplendent bloom that might convey and did indeed convey to mankind the ministrations of God's love. This contemporary civilization is no different and therefore the sinister force continues its full measure of release into the consciousness of mankind that all is well with the world because God is in his heaven. This has been spoken even in the time when continents were literally crumbling away and civilizations decaying in the past. True it is that all is well in heaven, for in our octave, now removed through the veil, we are no longer involved in the machinations and ministrations of mankind, save in such a manner as this one, where we seek to create in the consciousness of mankind a greater understanding of the passions for freedom which Archangel Michael called to your attention this evening last past. I say to you then today with the fullness of divine comprehension that the light of God and the light of the great white brotherhood has never been higher upon the planetary body, nor have the ears of mankind ever waxed duller, nor their vision grown more dim. The perceptions of men today are constantly bombarded by the opaquing influences of darkness and discord. And in the jangle of uncertainty, men are constantly perusing spiritual things only to grow disheartened by this and that philosophy, while the eternal presence of God, the sun magnificence of the Christ law, continues to be flaunted by mankind in utter defiance of that command 
Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. We then who see presaging the golden age, the complete magnificent manifestation of the world order of the golden rule, say to you today that the simple law of love thy neighbor as thyself would have fulfilled all the requirements for society and humanity. Yet they will not practice that which they preach, nor will they actually epitomize in the arena of action in those areas of God's intent the purposes which he himself so beautifully manifested in every avatar son whom he has sent to the world as a treasure anointed from his heart who went forth in the name of the great white brotherhood and the spirit of humanity to flood the world with the light of the Pleiades, with the light of Orion, with the light of the great white brotherhood at inner levels. I have come this day for the express purpose of penetrating the shard of mortal consciousness and causing you to recognize that just because tragedy has not encompassed man around completely at this moment does not in any way give assurance that it will not occur. It is before it occurs that the warning sounds forth that God and the masters may prevent it, that we may establish in this civilization that infinite law of supply and demand, answering the calls of the children of earth and flooding them with the love of our hearts so that we may wipe away the tears that have fallen from their eyes because their hearts are contrite and they have a feeling of infinite compassion according to their capacity to receive infinite compassion. I say to you all today then, Awaken and quicken within yourself the compassion of God that will turn from concern about your individual selves to the complete salvation of a planet and, in effect, a system of worlds. For this planet is a link in the planetary chain, and it is necessary for the evolutions of this earth, cognizant of their many blessings, to understand that the great white brotherhood by its eternal manifestation of watchful guarding interest over all mankind cannot do for you what you can do for yourselves. And therefore I say to you today that the responsibility that is attendant upon you is a mantle from our heart of light which we will definitely in answer to your calls caused to be placed upon your shoulders that you may understand that K-17, functioning as I do in invisible octaves, cannot be expected to do more than to alert you and to alert the leaders of the world as to the dangers inherent and ever-present with this civilization and world order and to say to you today in a sense of every man's mission that there are none who have the knowledge of this law or to whom this law should be given that can exonerate themselves of responsibility for the cosmic charge that we have initiated this day and sent forth as a seal of the Holy Spirit upon mankind in gratitude for the manifold blessings that have filled to overflowing his individual chalice that God may make of him as he did of the beloved son Christos, a manifest representative of the Holy Spirit upon this earth. Ye are God's sons and daughters. Ye are God's children. You are as much a part of the light and of my legions as I am. For you have a responsibility to discover in the world and in the world itself all those hindering circumstances that deprive you from time to time of the necessary God happiness which the Lord God of hosts himself and the captain of the Lord's hosts desires to pour into the chamber of each man's specific identity that that man as the beloved son may truly capture all that God has already placed within him as potential in the center of his being pulsates this great God flame, the liberty of life, 
threefold in name, love, wisdom, and power, creating by its flame a passion to cut through all density that hinders you and say to each son upon this planet, broad, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy being, with all thy strength, and thy neighbor as thyself. For on this commandment hangs the law and the prophets. All things are dependent upon the action that the students individually will engage in. And I am so aware of the great love in your hearts that seeks to fashion of your own substance a gift unto heaven that will alleviate the present tension in the world situation. And I assure you that as the years roll by, we will continue to stand by you as you stand by us. But that action which must occur is the action of the now, and that is the action of today. Today is the day of salvation for all humanity. And in the ever-present sense of the love of God, and his desire to bestow upon mankind below. We say, let us see the sacred fire glow within each heart, not as banked fires apart from God, but as the great cosmic flow of energy, emanation, pouring forth penetration into the world order, not always spoken boldly, but often released as flow from cosmic hearts right here below to create in other men the glow, the afterglow that in thee is perfect, perfect perfection from the tree of life, eternal direction, ending strife and blessing mankind as all see and be that which I am, the anthem of the free of all men. Amen. Gracious ones, the great white brotherhood salutes your hearts. And by the savoir faire, which is the savoir faire of heaven, we say there has been given to you this day the leaven that can raise the whole lump of all substance of all creation. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump and world need can be met with God's speed if you will take this divine seed to heart and nourish it there with prayer and love and devotion and tenderness and an intended explosion of God magnificence in the world as true culture, beauty of music and art form expression, diplomacy and tact, judgment and wisdom right action and immortality. May the light of immortality and its cosmic sense remain with you always. On behalf of the Council of Paris, the Council of my legions, the Darjeeling Council, the Council of the Royal Tetons and the Cave of Symbols, the Brotherhood of Mount Shasta, and all true outposts of the Great White Brotherhood that stand alone as representatives, outposts of freedom upon this planet, I thank you for your kindness and attention, and I pray upon you the blessing of my legions of light that you may find through discovery the reality of thyself. I thank you.
of flame, I am come in the name of Almighty God, and to raise a sword of blue flame over the heart of America, for the cup of great wrath is trembling, even the vials of wrath referenced by John in Revelation over the entire planet, because of the darkness of mortal consciousness and the denial of the faith in the immortal light and the purposes of light. I am come with my legions of light, and I am come to raise in the consciousness of mankind a measure of infinite faith that will enable them to penetrate the veil of mortal miasma of illusion and of despair that has caused mankind to cry out and evoke hope from the very heart of God this very hour that God would vacate the sinister strategies that control the hordes of shadow among the children of men, the power of hypnotic control that seeks to cause the youth of the world to go down a pathway whose end is death and shadow and frightful fear. I say to you then, in the name of mercy, 
O mothers of America and fathers of America and parents of the world, awake before it is too late to the need to take a genuine interest in the things of the spirit that have given birth to all pulsations in form. I invoke then, in the name of the eternal presence, the leaders of the Blue Flame Band who are able to carry the crystal diadem, the crystal diadem that represents the crown of Christ's perception. I invoke them now, and I say, let their 7,000 legions of light stand round about this place with drawn sword, and let there flash forth in the consciousness of mankind an understanding of the passion for freedom. Freedom is more than a name, beloved ones. Freedom is a flame. It is a delight in the presence of truth above error, it is the need of the soul to breathe free the divine intent and to embrace the spirit most holy that has created all universal life for one purpose, and that is to obtain its freedom and its victory. Won't you please be seated? I come now then in the presence of my legions and with full God content in the immortal purposes to say to you all that the great white brotherhood has desired with a desire that knows no bounds to produce in the world of men a great passion for freedom that will equalize that which is above. That which is above shall then manifest below and in the hearts of men that in their goings to and fro they may begin again to understand what it is to be a chalice most holy, a chalice of devotion to the central purposes of that divine love which fashioned the frame of man's energy and gives cohesive power to the atoms of substance that control form density as well as spiritual manifestation. I am an archangel, and in me there is no shadow of swerving from the eternal purpose. My eyes are as a coal of fire, able only to perceive his brilliance, the sun's splendor of divine magnificence that every man understands within but few understand without. We come then to cut men free from all the blind passions that ensnare them day after day to the same old patterns of aborted hate and delay. We come to say to all, awake and understand the need to raise this pall of mortal effluvia. What is effluvia? What is the passion of the free. Effluvia is mortal creation. Effluvia is human creation. It is the passions of the enslaved. The passions of the free are God delight. The understanding of the need to draw forth cosmic energy and enshrine it in the grail-like presence of manifestation. Manifestation is God. When light's purposes are fulfilled, light's purposes are real. Light's purposes are for all, but all will not understand it, for all do not have faith. And it is with this certain knowledge that I come forth then into the world of form by invocation from myriad hearts to create a new sense of God magnificence in the hearts of the children of men that they will see that the Pleiades are the belt of eternal magnificence 
pulsating down through the corridors of universal astronomy and revealing to mankind that there is a home of the great white brotherhood where the splendid star Sirius pulsates out her life waves as fire ring after fire ring brings forth the miracle of astonishing perceptions to the children of men that light emanates, 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 emanates out into form and to produce the miracle of cosmic rebirth in the hearts of those who believe that I am and believe in the reality of themselves who understand that the meaning of life is goodness and mercy and light and truth and beauty and strength and adoration and penetration, infinity penetrating the finite world and opening to the vision of mankind the realities of the seven holy spheres. Shushamahaya. In trite. Be it done, O God, and may the sealed casket of the eternal presence, of the eternal love, be opened. O eternal love, flow forth and release the cadences of orderly progression into form consciousness that men that see through a veil darkly may see face to face that our reality is now. Love is the passion of God for his creation. Love will not be denied. And we have this night opened up a sealed casket that has not been released upon this planetary body since the hour when Christ forgave Magdalene. And the ointment that shall anoint the body of the Christ upon this planetary body shall speak of forgiveness and a release to mankind of the hardness of his heart which for generations has kept mankind bound because they have uttered words of defamy against their brethren and they have released into the atmosphere the psychic poison of their own hatred and have not understood the need to release density into the light of God that never fails and utter the word of forgiveness to every single solitary heart designed by the same creator for the same self-magnificent God purposes. Men then have betrayed this because they have not understood the meaning of love and it is to the passion of true love that we signify our faith this night saying to ye all, the love of the Christ for his God is the love of the light that is in thee for the Father that created and formed thee that he might bestow upon thee the communion of saints. Come ye out then from among them and be ye a separate people. Come ye into union, communion with our octave of light and amplify the power of faith as you have never before amplified it. Remove the barriers that in your consciousness acts as the power to deny. Understand that if you have the faith of a grain of mustard seed, you can say to this mountain of adversity, be thou removed and it will be so. Understand then that the flow of this great divine resurgent energy, the power of the infinite Christos to flow out into the world of form is the magnificence of God's love for thee that seeks to have in thee reborn the eternal passions of the free, the power of the light to see and perceive the sundering now of those veils of man's strange effluvic substance. Let man bow and understand that though he be but formed in dust, 
that which has formed him must be the spirit, not the frail outer self. And it is to this sacred spirit of immortality that we dedicate every man, every woman, every child upon this planet, whether they will it or no. And we do it not against their free will, but because of the enormous response of the students of light who have continually pled for their brethren in a state of bondage, that that bondage be disallowed and that freedom be born. I do not say then that this very hour all mankind will accept the full God magnificent faith that we manifest, but I do say that we have implanted in their hearts a seed of faith this night, which is a coil from the altars of heaven to remove man's sense of dust and ashes, the consciousness of separation, the consciousness that has splintered the body of God upon earth into a multitude of many splendored things that we question from day to day because of its ineffectuality, because of its sensuality, because of its non-recognition of reality. And I say to you then, in the name of Almighty God, will you shake the dust from off your feet? Will you shake the passions of senseless world habit form from your consciousness? And will you accept that which I offer you tonight as a gift from the heart of your eternal presence, as a gift from the ascended master's octave, as a gift that is intended to go forth into the world of form, into the colleges, into the churches, into the homes, into the hospitals, into the prisons, into the astral realm, and set the captives free. Let the Lord God's pulsations of the sacred fire be born then upon this earth by all of the angels of my band, and as the seven thousand I command, and they are not all, but only a segment thereof, shall go forth to distribute the sacred Eucharist of our release of faith to the mankind of earth, I tell you that there shall be a pulsation throughout this planetary body that shall have the proportions of an earthquake that would split this planet in half literally, and yet it shall not do it, but it shall act in order to create a new sense of faith everywhere that the purposes of the great white brotherhood intended to be conveyed and carried through the air throughout this class shall be everywhere as the answer to man's immortal prayer flaming forth from his identity and intended to raise the planet up out of its density into the eternal patterns and passions of the free. Won't you please be seated? Where is hope? Where is faith? Where is charity? In you, the threefold flame, I say, relight. Faith, ignite. Hope, be born. Charity, flow. The archangels who lead the band of solemn angels in God's service then do demand in his name of the evolutions of this earth an understanding that transcends the framework of man's intellectual responses to the stimuli of the ascended host and of every thought-provoking idea upon this planetary body. We demand that man empty himself of all of his sensuality and human viciousness. We demand a change in the tempo of life upon earth. And we promise you that if mankind shall not speedily do so, that the retribution that shall come to the evolutions of this earth shall be the fulfillment of all that John the Revelator revealed in his vials of seven wraths that shall come to mankind. For there has come an end to the patience of heaven for the manifestation of divine love to the children of men. And while we ourselves are not intending to enforce it, we are determined to convey it in a greater measure 
in order to alter the conditions that mankind have imposed upon themselves through hypnotism, through drug hallucination, through infestation of sex entities, of dope entities, of human masochism that enables them to continually flagellate themselves by self-condemnation and not understand the passion of God for the human soul, the great love that he desires to convey to make the entire consciousness universally whole in light, by light, and for light. For the emancipation of man I am come this night, and for the freedom of all I am determined that you shall win the fight, but it shall not be an easy one. But to the victor belongs the spoils, and in this case the spoils, blessed ones, are the victory of this earth and the eternal return of this planetary body to its rightful place in the planetary chain where it can manifest that beautiful quality of the tone of pure love as this planet was intended to do and harmonize itself, not only the few but the many, until all that return shall understand they must not spurn our offer to adopt them daily, hourly, nightly into our band of light servers to come with us and be a part of our legions of light that flash forth in the dark our sword of right and truth as we convey to all the youth of this world a new sense of direction from the heart of the cosmic mother whose passions for her children are as Rachel's of old when the swordsmen had gone forth in their wickedness bold to corrupt and destroy. Let all understand then the great joy of our realm of light as we convey today a new sense of victory to all and a determination that human civilization shall not fall into the delusions of sense consciousness, into the confusions of wretchedness and destruction, but shall rise to understand that from the skies there descends day after day upon this planet legions of light and of cosmic fire conveying the noble heavenly desire for freedom to all, for freedom to all, for freedom to all. In God's name I say then, peace. Be still. Faith increase. It is God's will. We dare not doubt it. We dare not flout it. We speak it in his name. We revel in it. Our joy is full. Our cup runs over. Let it flow. I am the presence here below. God descends on every heart. God commands, let us now start to increase the flow of light below, to banish stain and earthly glow that glitters tinsel light, not jeweled. This is the substance that man has fooled himself with and we seek to stop that senseless hypnotic control and show him the reality of heaven's goal. This goal that glows is real. This glow that glows you'll feel as you approach a little nearer to the throne where man understands the three in one that now beneath the sun of majestic purpose speaks to all from sensedom. Find your freedom, one and all. Arise. Cognize the fire from the skies as faith that never dies but lives eternally within the altar of the heart as faith and strength apart yet one with God to release, release, release in all 
every tension man has fallen into, every tension and contention, until all are one with one eternal purpose. Let it live within. Let it live within. Let it live within.